Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. You know, life can be such a grind at times, and so we're here sharing God's Word with you to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the host of the Grind It Podcast, the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. Today we're going to finish up Luke chapter 2. I absolutely thought that I would finish it in the last podcast, but I ran out of time. And so we're going to make another one. And what I want to do just real quickly is just scroll through my notes and just recap what we have taken a look at so far in Luke chapter 2. And and we talked about how Luke just goes into so much detail and he offers names. and, And with these names, he gives us dates and and with these dates, we literally can put a time frame together to when Jesus was born and how uh, that was actually a fulfillment of pro- prophecy when Augustus um, took that census in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet you are a, ru- a ruler of Israel whose origins are in the distant past. So when Augustus called for that, census he had no idea whatsoever that he was going to be fulfilling a prophecy because that's how joseph and mary even ended up in bethlehem in the first place to uh, and they were there for that census when mary becomes uh uh, and she starts having labor pains and they can't find a place and you know the story from uh from the christmas story about how they couldn't find room there was no room in the inn, and so they end up in this room with a bunch of animals and Jesus is born surrounded by a bunch of animals imagine that uh, but we talked about uh, you know a lot of people try to discredit Luke because of what he says about uh, it being at uh, the time when Quirinius was the governor and um, and how there wasn't even um, census taken and we took a look at Augustus's uh, autobiography called the rest guest day and how he mentions several times that he took uh, a census, um, and then I used some other uh, guys' work to try to explain um, the the arguments, the basic of it, and and uh, and I used um, I put their arguments in uh, the the description on YouTube if you want to check those out because it's very interesting because a lot of people try to discredit Luke by by this census deal. And then we got into the birth of Jesus and and how he was born in a room full of animals and he was laid basically uh, what was the equivalent of a, a feeding trough in the manger. And when he was born, how you got these angels or these shepherds out there in this field watching their sheep like they've done their whole life and and. and how an angel just pops up on the scene and scares them to death and tells them, you know, the Messiah's been born. And, you know, here's the sign that you'll know that it's him. He'll be laying in a manger wrapped in his linen cloth. And uh, and so when it, this, all of a sudden this, this heavenly host, it, uh, the New Living Translation says these heavenly armies of God, these angels, just, just a vast number of them are praising God, saying glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those who, with whom God is pleased, and uh, they they disappear, and the angel, the, the the shepherds are probably looking at one another, saying, "What in the world's going on?" And so they go check out what the angel had told them, and sure enough, they find it to be true. And we talked about how we, you know, God is faithful. God, His promises are yes and amen. When He says something, He absolutely means it, and we can trust God in what He's saying, and how. Uh, you know, you have two opposite ends of the spectrum. You have these low-life shepherds who are considered unclean, and you have Luke, who is writing this gospel, who is a doctor. He's well polished in his in his Greek language, and and you got these guys who probably can't even put a complete sentence together. Luke has never seen Jesus at all. He's just been impacted by the story of Jesus, and it changed his life. These shepherds got to see Jesus, the baby Jesus, and he impacted their life even as a little baby so you got two opposite ends of the spectrum yet both of these these people were impacted and we talked about how god has or jesus has impacted people from his birth 
even before and after, and he's still impacting people today in the year 2021, and I hope that he's impacted your life uh, as well. Um, then we got into the circumcision of Jesus and uh, how Joseph and Mary took him to the temple to be circumcised and be dedicated to the Lord or to God uh, when he was eight days old and how Simeon had been looking for the Messiah for all of his life and he, he, he had a promise from God that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And now here he is. He wasn't even supposed to be at the temple and we talk about how he was led to the temple on that day um, and, and, and he listened to, by the Holy Spirit, and he listened to the Holy Spirit. And because he was obedient and he was led by the Spirit, he got to see the Messiah. And he held baby Jesus in his hands, and he said some cool things about him. And, and you can go back and listen to the previous podcast to, to hear all of that. Um, and then, well, I'll just tell you real quick. He said, I, here's a couple of things that he point, I want to point out. He says, I've seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. We talked about how Jesus died for everybody, no matter your skin color, no matter your nationality, where you're from, what race you are, whatever. Jesus died for all, and he wants all to be saved and be washed in his blood. And then Simeon says that he is a light to reveal God to the nations. And that's we talked about how that's what light does. It reveals. And uh, uh, Jesus showed us God. When he, he says, uh, the Hebrew author says, Long ago God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, He has spoken to us through His Son. Through His Son, Jesus. So God spoke to us through Jesus. And now He speak, speaks to us through His Word. And using the power of the Holy Spirit, He is still changing and impacting lives. And then we finished up talking about how Jesus' parents were amazed, or Luke did, about uh, how they were amazed at what was being said about him. And so Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary and the baby's, mo- the, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many to, in Israel to fall and many others to rise, and he has been sent as a sign from God. But many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and as a sword... And a sword will pierce your very soul. And then Luke turns um, just right around and he takes his focus off of of uh, Simeon and he puts his focus on this woman named Anna. And she was a prophetess who uh, worked and lived basically at the temple. Um, in verses 36 through 38, Luke says this. He says, Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple and she was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married for only seven years, and then she lived as a widow to the age of 84, and she never left the temple but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. And she came along just as Simeon was walking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God, and she talked about, about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. So this woman died, Anna, at the age of 84. And more than likely, she was married at a very young age, and her husband died seven years after they had been married. So from what Luke says, we can tell that they were a very godly couple who perhaps maybe worked at the temple. Maybe even her ha- her husband was uh, perhaps a priest. Uh, and after he died, she never left the temple again. And Luke says that she worshipped God day and night. Now think about that. Besides sleep, the only thing that Anna did was focus on God and worship Him day and night until she was 84 years old and she died. And Luke even tells us how she worshipped. Luke says that she worshipped by fasting and praying. And there's a great lesson and that for all of us, she worshiped God day and night by fasting and by praying. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't fast hardly at all, if ever. And I've tried it a few times. I know a lot of people that have, have done it. And that's one of my weaknesses that I really need to work on. But praying, I've gotten a lot better at it. Uh, uh, 
prayer is like gasoline to a, a, a car. It's like it's our communication to God. We talk to God through prayer, and we also listen to God when we pray. And, and you know, and, and we Jesus tells us to be alone when we're praying. Get get all, He says go into the closet, but you know we don't have to go into a literal closet. He's just talking about go to a place where you can be focused on god and then that's what anna was doing she was focusing so much on god she never wanted to leave god's presence that's why she stayed at the temple forever i mean where else really is there better to be yes we have to go to work because you know we got bills to pay but we can carry god with us at our workplace but that what i was going to say about praying is that, that is actually my prayer time i have a 45 minute drive to my first stop and so that is that is my prayer closet. My little Debbie tin wagon is is my prayer closet. Uh, the music gets shut off, uh, the radio gets turned off, and and it's my one on one time with God. And 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 you know I'm able to for 45 minutes just to 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 uh, praise God and 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 offer up my petitions before God and pray for a lot of things and a lot of people and a lot of situations. And then, you know, and then pray God for, to be glorified in all all the things that I mentioned in prayer. But if you don't have a place or you don't have a, a daily practice of prayer, that, that's one of the things I want to challenge you with uh, is is to find a place that you can spend some alone time with God because it is so important. I mean, if if we never communicate with our boyfriend or girlfriend or our, our husband or our wife. Uh, what what or our family members even but what what kind of if we don't communicate what kind of relationship are we going to have and that and, and that that's what prayer does it helps us, it, it is our communication to God yes God knows what's on our hearts yes God knows what we're thinking but he tells us to pray over and over again Jesus tells us to pray and then he gives us the model prayer he said this is how you should pray and so if if you don't have a prayer life, start off simple. It could be a minute to two minutes, five minutes, and work your way up. But spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time with God. And, and not only pray to Him, but like I said a while ago, listen. Listen to God. Listen to what He has to say. Be in tune with God and let His Holy Spirit guide you and that's what we talked about with Simeon in the last podcast and so coming back to Anna the prophetess that lived in the temple she worshiped day and night and Luke says she worshiped by fasting and by praying and um, and she just happened to walk by Simeon as he was talking to Joseph and Mary and when she heard what he said you could just see Anna with this big old smile on her face and and, and, and why do I say that she would have a smile on her face? Because Luke says that she told everybody who had been waiting for God to rescue Jerusalem. She told everybody about the baby. The Messiah is here. I have seen him with my own eyes. I heard Simeon talk about him, and I went over there to check him out for myself. The Messiah is here. And you know, if she's been praying and fasting for 80 years, uh, around 80 years she's got to have a big old grin on her face because she knows that her prayer her prayers have been answered and so uh that gives us actually three witnesses to the birth of the messiah the shepherds simeon and anna and so when the uh when Luke says that when Jesus' parents have fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. And there the child grew up healthy and strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. So besides what we're about to cover here, uh, as we're going to go to break, but when we come back from break, we're, we're going to talk about uh, Jesus staying behind at the temple talking to the religious leaders but this is all we know what's going on here in luke chapter 2 this is all we know about jesus's childhood all that stuff about him 
making birds from mud and all these crazy stories that that people come up with as him as a child and you know making birds out of mud and throwing them up and they come to life and they fly that's a bunch of crap because it it wasn't jesus didn't start his ministry until the age of 30 when john the baptizer baptizes him and his first miracle doesn't come along until after he starts his ministry and his first miracle is in john 2 when he turns the water in to wine so when we come back we're going to talk uh, a little bit uh we'll end up luke chapter 2 with what luke says about something that jesus does at the age of 12 that had his parents very very worried not worried but really scared to death because they kind of lost jesus and we'll talk about it when we come back from break we'll be right back one of the greatest challenges in living for Jesus, and let's just face it, it's sin. Our carnal nature likes to raise its ugly head every now and then, and so we'll do something crazy because something has caught our eyes, and we make a horrible decision, and, and then you know we just sin. Um, not if, but when is this going to happen? And when it does happen, what do we need to do? Well, we need to run to Jesus. We need to repent, and we need to ask for forgiveness. Much like David did when he sinned with Bathsheba and, and he wrote Psalm 51. Uh, here's some highlights from Psalm 51 that David says to God. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from guilt. Purify me from sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. Because that's what sin does. It robs us of our joy. David says, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Let's all be thankful for the blood of Jesus for his grace and his mercy. So Luke chapter 2 is basically all we have about the childhood of Jesus. And he does something at the age of 12 years old that just scared the crap out of his parents, just to put it blunt and uh, to be honest with you. In Luke uh, chapter 2 verses 41 through 52, it, Luke talks about Jesus staying in Jerusalem uh, when his parents are traveling back to uh, their hometown of Nazareth. And what Jesus is going to be doing is he's, he stays behind and he's talking to the religious teachers at the temple. And I would love to hear those conversations and, and, and what they were saying to each other because it talks about, Luke talks about how the people were just amazed at what this 12 year old kid knew. Um, because they had been studying all of their lives, and I'm sure this 12-year-old boy could really talk some Bible with them, if you will. And uh, uh, they, like, like I said, Luke says that they were just amazed. But they, they travel about a day's journey. Um, it's about a four-day journey from, if, you go, if you're going from Nazareth to Jerusalem uh, to the Passover, is what they were going there for. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, or it'd be a four-day journey back home. They travel for about a day. Jesus is nowhere to be found, but they just assume that he is, and this is where Mary and Joseph just really messed up because they just assumed that he was with some other people on down in the line that they were traveling with, maybe some relatives, but he wasn't. He was he was uh, in, in the temple talking to the religious teachers, and it is when... Uh, Mary and Joseph realize because well, Jesus didn't show up that evening that hey something ain't right here he's not here and he, they go to their relatives and they start digging around and asking questions and they can't find Jesus nobody's seen Jesus he hasn't been with anybody the whole time that they've been on this journey so they freak out and they hurry back to 
uh, Jerusalem, and it took them literally three days to find Jesus, and he, he, and he was right there the whole time in the temple talking to uh, the religious leaders. But like I said, th- they, they had traveled every year since Jesus was born. They had traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem for the Passover. And we've talked about the Passover Passover before in previous podcasts. But you can read Exodus chapter 12. It'll tell you uh, where God instituted the Passover because that's when the death angel, it was the, the last plague on Egypt. And they would lose their firstborn children. If, if, if When the death angel was going to be passing over people's houses, and they were told, the, the Hebrew people were told to take a lamb and sacrifice that perfect lamb that had no blemishes. And they were to take hyssop and dip the hyssop in the blood of the lamb and then take that hyssop with the blood on it and sprinkle it over the doorposts of the house. So when the death angel passed over their house and saw the blood, that's exactly what he would do. He would pass over and everybody inside the house would be spared. Nobody would die. But if the, if the angel passed over the house and there was no blood from the sacrificed animal there, the sacrificed lamb, then the firstborn would die. And this would be the ultimate um, act that it would allow uh, Pharaoh to say, that had enough, you, you people get out of here. But uh, that's how the Passover uh, came about. Next is chapter 12, or you can Google it and, and read all about the Passover if you want. But they had been traveling from Nazareth to Jerusalem and then back home for the Passover every year since Jesus was born. So this would be the twelfth year that they have made this pilgrimage, and and I can't help but wonder. But every time uh, that they made this pilgrimage to to the Passover uh, uh, celebration, uh, did Jesus think about himself becoming the Passover Lamb that Paul talks about in First Corinthians chapter five? verse 7 did he did he know i mean and i'm sure that he did i'm sure he knew his mission was the cross that he was the passover lamb that he would someday have to die for the sins of the whole world And, and by the way i mentioned this earlier but that's why simeon told her a sword will pierce your very soul in john 19 34 because one of the soldiers comes along and pierces Jesus' side with the spear to make sure that he was dead. And John says, immediately blood blood and water flowed out. Jesus knew his mission, and it was the cross. And he made it clear to his disciples over and over again after he had started his ministry that he was going to be betrayed and he was going to die for the sins of the people. But did he know that at the age of 12? Was this what he's talking about with these religious leaders? Did he Was he just quizzing them on what they knew and the prophecies that they knew about the Messiah? I would love to know or had love to have, have been able to hear those conversations between 12-year-old Jesus and these religious leaders. But here he is. He's having these discussions with these guys and and in thinking that he will someday have to be that sacrificial lamb, it's just amazing to to really think about and try to you know just imagine what they discuss. But when he didn't show up on that late evening, they had been traveling for about a day, and they start looking among their relatives, like I said a while ago, and 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 there's no cell phones to call anyone. You can't call the cops for help. Uh, you know, and so panic begins to set in, as you can see it when you read the story in Luke 2. And so I'm sure they're just running back to Jerusalem as fast as they can. And Luke says that it took them three days to find Jesus. And, you know, I, I just can't fathom the fear that they're having to deal with. I, I, I remember uh, back earlier in the summer this year, and I was sitting in my room and I can hear, when I'm in my room, I can hear my, my daughter plays basketball. So I can hear her out in the driveway bouncing the ball and shooting. And she'll throw it up against the house like somebody's passing it to her. So she makes all kinds of racket noise and I can hear her. So I know she's safe. And and I was watching something on TV or doing something. I can't remember. But I some time had passed and I just realized I'm not hearing that basketball anymore. 
So I get up to go check things out and I walk outside and my daughter is nowhere to be found. And I'm like, okay, where is she at? And so I start walking around the house. Well, I'm walking around our vehicles and she's not around our vehicles. I walk around the side of the house, she's not there. I walk around the backyard, not there. I walk around the other side of the house, not there. I come back inside. I'm looking all around uh, downstairs, not there. I go upstairs, she's not there. She, so I'm, I'm like, okay, what is going on? I look in the bathroom, she's not, I'm hollering for her. Nope, she doesn't answer. I call her cell phone, she doesn't answer. And and, and she knows that, that, that she's the answer and she, she takes her phone with her everywhere uh, that she goes that's just that's just what we've told her to do and we've always told her if you leave to go anywhere you are to tell us where you're going and where you're going to be and and so it, it, she's 13 years old and what happened was uh uh I, 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 I go back outside again and and i see somebody walking up the street and it's my neighbor and her and what had happened was my neighbor had lost her husband and her daughter within a year span. And, and so she had uh, asked Miranda if she wanted to go walking with her. And Miranda said that she had just prayed a prayer while she was practicing basketball. For, she said, God, what do you want me to do for you? And that's when the neighbor came over and asked her if she would go walking. Uh, with her and Miranda said I just took it as a sign from God that I'm supposed to go walking with her and so that's what she did and I said well, you know what I'm I'm glad that you prayed that and I'm definitely glad that you're listening to God and you're being obedient to God but please 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 tell us where you're going it would have took you two seconds to pop in and say hey I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going walking with the neighbor but she didn't do that and I can just remember when I was going all around the house and when she wasn't answering her phone, when I was uh, going inside the house and, and hollering her name, and she, it was just silence. And it was just, oh, I could just remember the panic that started to over, overcome me. And, and I, I, could just, I could just picture the panic that Joseph and Mary are feeling. And, and, and when they realize that Jesus is not in with this crowd that they've been traveling with and and realizing that he's not there, and now they've got to go all the way back to Jerusalem and hope and pray that they can find him, and that nothing has happened to him. And 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 it's just it's just real to me, I guess, because uh, I, I, just in that situation over that was just a few minutes for me, and to know that my daughter was safe. But for them, they've been traveling for a whole day. And now they've got to travel all the way back and with this on their mind. I mean, it's not like they can hop in a car or a plane and, and get there fast. I mean, they're they're on foot or you know, or maybe riding an animal. It's just nothing happened fast back then. There was, like I said, there's no cell phones to call somebody. They can't dial, you know, nine one one and say, "Is my son in Jerusalem somewhere? Has anybody turned him in?" You know, there's. There's no lost and found on kids. You know, you can, it's not Walmart's blue light system, you know, or uh, Code Adam. Uh, there's nothing like that. They, they just had to, to worry and be upset for three days, Luke says. And so Luke 2.48 says his parents didn't know what to think when they found him, you know, because he, he, he says, you know, he says, why are you looking for me? I, I, I must be about my father's business. And, it's, and I, I'm just thinking, Mary's probably thinking, you could at least give us a heads up and we could hang out with you for a little bit, you know, but you need to stay with us because you're still a child and I'm still responsible for you because you your ministry has not started yet, young man. You need to come with us. So Luke 2.48 says, His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, Why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere. And like I said, Jesus replies, why did you need to search? Didn't you know I must be about, uh, that I must be in my father's house? And verse 50 says, they didn't understand what he meant. And, and, and it was all confusing to Joseph and Mary. Even though they knew that he was a special child, even though that they knew because of what the angel Gabriel had told her before uh, she was pregnant with Jesus, 
that he was going to be uh, from God, that he was Emmanuel, God with us, and his name was going to be Jesus, which means God is salvation, that he would be the Savior of the world, they, they, they just didn't, they just really didn't understand. It had to be, I mean, can you imagine how difficult that would be to comprehend that you are the, the mother of God's son, and, and this is a, a special dude, and he's going to be the Savior of the world. They must not have known about the, the prophecies about Jesus having to, to start a ministry and, and, and grow up and, and, and to die on a cross for the sins of the people, which is, again, going back to what Simeon told Mary, there will be a sword that pierces your side or a spear will pierce your side. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus died on the cross. And that soldier popped that spear in his side. And John said, out forth comes blood and water, showing that Jesus was human. And Jesus was dead, just like he promised to do, die for the sins of the world. So Luke ends uh, Luke chapter 2 by just telling us all that we know about Jesus' childhood. And he says this, Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. He was a cool kid and the people loved him. He was a special child. But soon they would be rejecting him because they just couldn't get it past the point of saying, ain't this Joseph's boy? Ain't that Joseph's son? How can... How can how can he be saying he's from God? How can he be saying he's a son of man? How can he be doing these miracles? Because we, we've seen this guy grow up all of his life. You know, there was so much disbelief and so much, so much rejection. And, and, and what about you today? Have you rejected Jesus? Do you just keep, continue to hear the gospel and say, ah, I just don't believe it? Well, one of these days your time is going to be up. And, and you can reject Jesus all you want to. You, that, that is your prerogative. Uh, you know, like as, as the words of Bobby Brown song, it's my prerogative. You know, you can you can make that choice, but you're also going to have, there's consequences that come with that choice. And if you die lost, and, and you, you, you keep rejecting Jesus' uh, sacrifice for your sins, and His blood is not washing your sins away, then you'll never have an opportunity to make that decision again. And you're going to stand before God in judgment. And you're going to be separated from God. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I didn't have a relationship with you. You didn't care anything about me. And I, I cried out to you several, several times. I sent many people your way and shared the gospel message with you. Don't you remember hearing that uh, that guy's podcast and, and how he talked about Jesus. And he gave his best efforts to tell people about Jesus. And you just shut the podcast off. And you didn't listen to the whole message. And you, you just continue to reject my message from preacher after preacher after preacher or friend from friend from friend depart from me i'm sorry but that's the way it's got to be don't be that don't be that guy don't be that girl today give your life to jesus christ while you still have the opportunity be baptized for the remission of your sins and be filled with the holy spirit and let god lead you and give you a new purpose in life because this baby grows up and we're going to see in luke chapter 3 that jesus is going to start his ministry and he's not a baby anymore and people they they love the little cuddly baby at christmas time but they don't love the adult jesus who died for their sins i don't get it i don't understand it but that's that's the way it is people want the baby but they don't want the adult they don't want the savior because the Savior is telling them how they should live and it's threatening their lives and they won't be told how to live. And I hope and pray that's not you today. And if you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you are living for Jesus and you do know Him as the adult, as the Savior, and His blood is washing your sins away, then I pray that you will share your hope, your message of what God has done in your life with someone that you know who is not following the Lord, who has maybe walked away from God, whatever, share the message of hope. Share the impact that Jesus has made in your life with those 
that you know, your friends and your neighbors and your family. God bless you and keep grinding. Thank you for listening to the Grinded Podcast today. May God bless you. If you have any comments or questions, you can email them to us at thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com. If you would like Randy to come and speak at your church or your next event, you can contact him through that same email address. Also, I would like to thank Jody Foster's Army, also known as JFA, for their song, Abba, as we use for our intro and our outro off their untitled 1984 album. May God bless you, and remember, keep your eyes on Jesus and keep grinding.